The IAI Levi was a single-engined fourth-generation fighter developed in Israel in the 1980s. Developed by Israel Aircraft Industries, the choice to develop the Levi was controversial, both with the Israeli public due to the enormous associated costs and particularly with the U.S. government due to competition with American fighters on the export market. These issues led to its ultimate cancellation. The Levi was planned to be the mainstay of the Israeli Air Force, and considerable export sales for the aircraft had been forecast. The uniqueness of its design was in the combination of a small, aerodynamic, highly maneuverable plane, with sophisticated, software-rich systems, low armed drag, and the ability to carry a large payload at high speed and over long distances. As of 2012, two of the prototypes have been preserved, and have been on public display. Development, Origins, Conceptually, the Levi had its origins in the idea espoused by IAF Commander and Minister of Defense Ezra Wiseman that Israel's combat aircraft should fall into two tiers a euro a small number of high-performance aircraft and a larger bulk with less sophistication and complexity. In the mid-1970s, the plane that was to become the Levi was meant to be a small fighter bomber to replace aging IAF aircraft such as the Douglas A-4 Skyhawk and IAIKFIR. However continuous revisions of the proposed aircraft led to the incorporation of more advanced technologies and ideas to produce an ambitious and advanced aircraft. The Levi can be said to have formally begun development in February 1980, which is the point where the Israeli government had authorized the IAF to present a list of technical specifications and requirements for the development of the IAF's future fighter. The adoption of certain components such as an engine produced by Pratt & Whitney were foregone conclusions. The Betche Mesh engine plant already had an established relationship with the company and planned to co-produce the engine, thus enabling some of the manufacturing to be carried out domestically in Israel. In addition to the primary intention to perform air-to-ground missions, the IAF sought to equip the Levi to operate in other roles as Israel could have potentially faced a sustained war for aerial supremacy against multiple neighbors. The Levi was therefore designed with the flight performance and capabilities to perform as a supplement to the IAF's own F-15s in air-to-air -air combat duties. As the Levi was viewed as being relatively easy to fly, the aircraft was also under consideration as an advanced jet trainer as well. The aircraft featured a delta wing with large, steerable canards situated in the front of the aircraft. While this configuration afforded excellent maneuverability it also exhibited natural instability in flight. To compensate, the Levi was fitted with a sophisticated digital fly-by-wire system which allowed the plane to take advantage of this particular wing design while eliminating its shortcoming. The Levi was one of the first aircraft to feature this type of configuration which has become more common in many other fighter aircraft. On December 31, 1986, the first prototype of the Levi took off on its maiden flight. The test pilot, Minachem Shmuel, head of IAI's Air Operations Section, took off at 1321 and stayed in the air for 26 minutes, during which he checked the engine and controls. The handling was described as excellent, with a high degree of stability in crosswind landings. Both BO-1 and BO-2 were tandem two-seaters, with the rear cockpit occupied by test equipment. About three months later, a second Levi prototype took to the air. It featured improvements and additional features over the first, with a belly-mounted fuel tank, a special mid-air refueling probe and several new avionic systems. By August 1987, the month in which the Levi was cancelled, a total of 82 sorties had been flown between the two prototypes and a significant proportion of the flight envelope had been explored. Controversy and cancellation While the Levi had attracted the steadfast support of IAF veteran and Likud minister Moshe Arendt, there was considerable dissent over the development. While the U.S. was a key partner in the aircraft's development, there was vocal political opposition to financing the Levi which may have been a competitive aircraft in the export market against American aircraft such as the F-16CD and the FD. The Levi would have also required a great deal of other competing military requirements and sought investments to be abandoned, thus there were elements of the armed forces that did not support the project and those officers who felt that the F-16 possessed similar performance to the Levi and was readily available already, making the foreign F-16 cheaper and easier to procure. 
IAF Major General Avi Ben Nun argued in favor of cancelling the levy and acquiring 75 F 16s instead. Proponents, such as the Minister Without Portfolio Moshe Arendt, advocated that the levy was a high prestige program, asserting Israeli technological capabilities and would work to the nation's economic advantage. A failure to proceed with the development could lead to significant job losses and possibly contribute to emigration. The Israeli state comptroller argued the resulting unemployment was negligible. Arendt was keen to promote potential partnerships and technology exchanges in regards to the Levi. Perhaps optimistically, IAI had projected export sales of the Levi to be as many as 407 units to customers including South Africa, Chile, Taiwan, and Argentina. There were reports of significant South African interest and involvement during the early development of the Levi. In later development, however, Israel had given the U.S. explicit guarantees that the Levi would not be made available to export. Prior to and following the cancellation, IAI employees organized numerous demonstrations and public appeals to rally support for the Levi. Public opinion was roughly evenly divided on the subject of the Levi. In the U.S., there was considerable opposition to the Levi program from the Pentagon due to the fear that the heavy financial costs would impair other military capabilities. There were also questions about the financial soundness of the project and that Levi technologies may be shared with South Africa, which had a history of close military cooperation with Israel. The financial burden of developing the Levi was such that the governor of the Bank of Israel, Michael Bruno, publicly stated that Israel could not realistically afford the luxury of producing fighter aircraft, and would harm economic growth. On August 30, 1987, Israel's cabinet conducted a decisive vote on whether to continue the development of the Levi. This development was influenced by considerable lobbying by the U.S., who made several compensatory proposals in exchange for the cancellation. The cabinet rejected the continuation at a margin of 12 euro 11, with one cabinet member abstaining. Following the outcome of the vote, Levi supporter Moshe Arendt offered his resignation, refusing to be associated with the decision to terminate the aircraft. Shortly afterwards, Israel approved the purchase of 90 F 16 CS from the United States, which acted as an effective replacement to the Levi. Aftermath and Legacy When the Levi project was cancelled in 1987, a total of five airframes had been built. Prototypes BO-1 and BO-2 were completed, while BO-3, BO-4, and BO-5 were incomplete. Parts from BO-1 and BO-2 were pulled to complete BO-3. The gutted airframe of BO-2 was put in the Israeli Air Force Museum at the Hatzrim Air Base for static display, and the remaining units, BO-1, BO-4 and BO-5, were all scrapped. Two years after the project's cancellation, IAI completed the third Levi prototype, the aircraft went on to serve as a technology demonstrator and as a flying test bed for internal IAI projects. Later use was as a ground test bed. While the Levi project had come to an end, the development represented an important opportunity to demonstrate and advance the capabilities of Israel's aerospace industry. Many of the aircraft's subsystems, avionics, and components went on to be developed and made commercially available fueling defense export sales and proving to be a lucrative business in its own right. The ELM 2032 Pulse Doppler radar, developed originally for the Levi was an example. It has since been exported for use on a wide range of aircraft. Despite the Levia Euro unregistered trademark S cancellation, the investment in its development had significant results. The technological knowledge accumulated during the development contributed to the achievement of Israel's first launch of a satellite into space in 1988. It resulted in a new level in avionics systems, and contributed to Israel's high-tech boom of the 1990s by releasing into the economy the technological talents of almost 1,500 engineers who had been employed on this one project. In July 2013, the Israeli Air Force announced that the Alenia Aramaki M346 Master, an advanced trainer aircraft under procurement, would receive the name Levi in Israeli service. A total of 30 M346s are to be operated from 2014. The China Question In 2008, aviation publishing house Jane's alleged that China's development of the Xiong J-10 had benefited from technical information from the Levi project, 
relying on information from Russian engineers who said they had heard this from some of their Chinese colleagues. The J-10 underwent an 18-year-long development period from 1988 to 2003, as the aftermath of the 1989 Tiananmen Square massacre forced them to turn to Russia for engines and other technologies, while developing their own substitutes. Those choices, in turn, do much to dictate the plane's structure because they affect its fuel needs, center of gravity, etc. A design with a different engine and equipment set may offer ideas, but won't solve key engineering problems. The J-10 looks rather different when compared directly, but shares the Levi's tail less canard delta with underbody intake configuration type. Even so, technology sharing remains a serious issue. In view of the high level of American involvement in the Levi, in terms of technology sharing as well as funding, the sale of a Levi and all technical assistance in J-10 production could represent an illicit transfer of American technology to the Chinese by the Israelis. There have been no public statements or formal charges along those lines. By 2000, however, advanced technology transfer of any origin had become anathema to the USA which forced Israel to cancel a sale of Falcon airborne early warning planes. The designer of the J-10, Song Wen Kong, has denied any connection whatsoever with Levi program, pointing to similarities with the J-9, which was developed in the 1960s and predates the Levi. This was echoed by a PLAAF's major Zhang Wei Gang in a 2012 interview. Design Overview The Levi was rather smaller and lighter than the F-16, with a less powerful engine and lower thrust-to-weight ratio. The wing was unusual in having a shallow sweep on the trailing edge, giving a flesh plan form. The straight leading edge was swept at 54 degrees, with maneuver flaps on the outboard sections. Two-piece flaperons occupied most of the trailing edge, which was blended into the fuselage with long fillets. Nine different control surfaces were controlled by quadruplex fly-by-wire, with no mechanical backup giving the Levi an instability of between 10 and 12 percent. The engine air intake took the form of a plain chin-type scoop, externally resembling that of the F-16, yet internally very different, not exposing the jet engine compressor stage forwards, thus drastically minimizing the frontal cross-sections of IR and radar alike. The wingtips were cropped and fitted with missile rails to carry Raphael Python 3 air-to-air missile. At 38.5 square meters, the wing area was 38% greater than the F-16. The wing aspect ratio was 2.10 a euro barely two-thirds that of the F-16. The canards, located slightly astern of and below the pilot, caused minimal vision obstruction in vision. They allowed for pitch control in a single piece, all moving arrangement. The wing and fin development were the responsibility of Grumman who were contracted to produce at least the first 20 of each. The nose wheel was located aft of the intake and retracted rearwards, with the lightweight main gear mounted on the fuselage. A sharply swept vertical tail was mounted on a spine on top of the rear fuselage, and was supplemented by two steeply canted ventral strikes, mounted on the ends of the wing root fillets. Composites, used in 22% of the airframe, allowed air elastic tailoring to the wings. They were used also in the vertical tail, the canards, and various doors and panels. IAI claimed a significant reduction in radar cross-section. The standard practice of providing a second seat for conversion training, by means of reduced fuel or avionics was shunned by IAI. They designed the two-seater as the base model which was then adapted into a single-seater, leaving ample space for avionics growth. It was intended that the first 30 production aircraft would be two-seaters to aid service entry. Avionics and Cockpit The Levi's avionics suite was almost entirely of Israeli design, and employed a modular design capable of adding upgrades via the Elbit ACE-4 mission computer. The Levi had a bootstrapped type hydraulic system, pressurized by ADEX pumps providing 207 bars of pressure to the flight surfaces. The electronics were powered by a Sunstrand 60 kVA integrated drive generator, with a SAFT main battery and marathon standby. Sunstrand also provided the actuation system. The emergency power unit and environmental control system were produced by Garrett Eye Research, as was the secondary power system. 
all-round pilot vision was provided by a wraparound windshield and bubble canopy. Unlike the F-16 steeply raked seat and side stick controller, however, the Levi employed a conventional upright seat and central control column. The cockpit employed HOTAS, with a Hughes aircraft wide-angle diffractive optics head-up display seated on a single LOP up front control panel. There were three conventional displays, two of which were color. Display redundancy was ensured by data sharing between the HMDs. There was an LT Arcade 740 fully computerized inboard UHF radio system and a navigation system which included the Tumen TIN 1700 Advanced Inertial Navigation System. Aspects such as flexibility and situational awareness were emphasized in the design to reduce pilot workload at high G and in a dense threat environment. The tilted seat was ruled out since it would raise the pilot's knees and cause a reduction in panel space, and would also allow for the high G neck and shoulder strain injuries common with F-16 pilots. A side stick controller was discounted for three reasons, it took too much space on the starboard console. It was difficult for an instructor pilot to monitor his pupil as it was a force transducer. And even a minor right arm injury could jeopardize the mission. Operators. Israel, Israeli Air Force, Specifications Data from Wilson, General Characteristics, Crew, 1, Length, 14.57 meters, Wingspan, 8.78 m, Height, 4.78 m, Wing Area, 33.0 mass squared, Empty Weight, 7,031 kilograms, Loaded Weight, 9,991 kilograms, Max Takeoff Weight, 19,277 kg, Power Plant, Wanner, Pratt and Whitney Palais, 1120 after burning turbofan, 91.5 kN, performance, maximum speed, 1,965 km per hour slash Mach 1.6, range, 3,700 km, service ceiling, 15,240 m, rate of climb. 254 meters per second, wing loading, 303.2 kg mass squared, thrust weight, 0.94, armament, 1A, 30 mm DEFA cannon, 7,260 kg of stores, see also, aircraft of comparable role, configuration and era, Saab JAS-39 Gripen, Shunch J-10, F-16, JF-17 Thunder, Mitsubishi F-2. References, Citations Bibliography, Farley, John. Vision of the Future. Flight International, January 29, 1991 PPA 22 Euro 25. Hoglund, David G. The Defense Industrial Base and in the West. Routledge, 1989. ISBN 0-4150-0923-5. Hunter, Jane. Israeli Foreign Policy, South Africa and Central America. South End Press, 1987. ISBN 0-8960-8285-7. Rabinovich, Itamar and Haim Shaked. Middle East Contemporary Survey, Volume 11 A Euro 1987. Westview Press, 1989. ISBN 0-8133. 0925-5. Senor, Dan and Singer, Saul. Startup Nation, The Story of Israel's Economic Miracle. Hochet Book Group, 2009. ISBN 0-446-54146-X. Van Creveld, Martin. The Sword and the Olive, A Critical History of the Israeli Defense Force. Public Affairs, 2008. ISBN 0-7867-2546-X. Wilson, Stewart. Combat Aircraft Since 1945. Fyshik, Australia, Aerospace Publications, 2000. ISBN 1-875671-50-1. External links, The United States and the LAVI by Colonel James DeLowry, USAF. Federation of American Scientists, Israel Aircraft Industries Levi by Ruth Durenberg, Jewish Virtual Library.